Hi guys, welcome back to Kick Hard Reds and MK Sports Cars. Well, before I dive into the workshop and show you what's been going on, we'll talk about events. Yeah, first event of the year is the 1st of April. It's not April Fool's Day, 1st of April, the first cars and coffee for MK Sports Cars. We've got the Porsche Owners Club here, so if you're in a Porsche, that'd be also good to see. Second event, well, that comes along in the Cup 200 series. That's at Croft on 15th and 16th of April. We've got well, several cars of the Cup Series running around. It's only eight weeks away. They're spanning away quickly now, Atomic and RLM at Rich, trying to get these cars built. So don't forget, also like and subscribe, because then you get to see awesome cars like this. If you're watching last week's episode, we crated up one of our Sport 200 kits and sent it off to Canada. Well, the good news is it's arrived, and Alex has sent in this message confirming it's arrived. 7.52 p.m. UK time on the 22nd of February. It's here. For those of you trying to work out the maths, it was eight days and seven hours later for it to fly from UK to Canada. And that's with a bank holiday in between. Right, let's start off with this, guys. This is a little Indy Classic with a little Fireblade engine there, early Fireblade in there. Been in for a couple of little jobs, really. First job was changing the bonnet catches. So these are our new lockable ones in black. Can't come undone. It's nice and strong. What was the original as well? The, uh, the IVA stuff, really, that was on there, which you've seen, the rubber ones. Um, if you don't fit these correctly, they don't quite pull up in tension. You can have them foul if you don't do it correctly or fit it correctly. Um, and it, unfortunately, the customer had the same problem. They, they weren't fitted correctly, it was a little bit loose and the bonnet ex found its way off the vehicle, but he's getting that repaired. So we're fitting now the new lockable ones, which are great. You know, no issues with that. We fit them as standard. And then we do do a little cover for IVA, if you fit these later on, that goes over these um, for IVA as well. So that's nice and simple. Second job on it, um, we had some issues with it running. Um, this was the cable. This has got a paddle shifter in it, a very different kind of paddle shift. It's an air shift system, but Pretty much the guy who built this car was a, I think it was a Mercedes or something like that, um, aeronautical engineer. Um, and he'd done his own sort of paddle shift. Now it runs some kind of actuator and everything else. It's actually got like a pump on it, which is used like on a tire inflator really, with a little air canister underneath that you almost get with the BB guns um, that pressurize it all. And it's got these little carbon panels that have been made for up and down, but it's been missing some gears. Well, this was the cable that you see here. We put a new one on. This was a cable that was hanging down, which I think was causing some real, well, more than reliability issues. So we've replaced that as well. But yes, yeah, nicely done, this little car. All the little switch gills, nicely carbon bits, some custom carbon ducts that are on here and scoops and vents on it. Uh, we've seen this car before, nicely built car, very tidy for its age is actually in very, very, very clean condition. All the wishbones are mint, there ain't a spot of rust on this car. And I think this is like a 06, 07 car. So she's 14, 15, 16, 17 plus years old now and still looking extremely tidy. Yeah, drives nice, engine smooth, but the only thing needs dyno in now. So I think he's sending it off to be getting the jet sorted out on the car. So that's the next job for this car and then he'll be ready for the spring. Okay, something a bit different in the workshop that's landed here. This is a very early 80s, 90s car. It's a Sylvia Leader, uh, I do believe it's called. Um, in for this, it's had a cross flow in it and basically we're gonna be sticking, the customer's delivered it like this, we haven't put it in there, <laughs> genuinely. This is a Chicks 1000 K2 uh, engine and all we're gonna be doing this is putting it in there for him, making an engine cradle for it up and, a, and, a, and attaching it with a prop shaft. Customer's gonna do on the rest, wiring, ECUs, everything else and all of that. But yeah, something a bit different, not something you see every day, it's got like a, Needs a little bit of work in here, tidying up as you can see on there, but I think it's like a Vauxhall Viva front axle or something like that, and rear end on these very early 80s cars. And things shows how much kit cars, I suppose, or they're like sports cars, how much they've evolved with not using all these donor parts so much now and very much custom cars. You know, from this to where we are to this today, which we'll talk about in a minute, they're worlds apart, but he still has fun with it. It's got a nice little metallic paint job on it and it sparkles in the sun. So if you subscribe, you'll see us put this bad boy in that engine bay. 
Okay, guys, well, it's uh, Black Panther time now. Um, haven't seen this because we've been on with other things. It's moved out of the bay into this area because we're in with starting the vehicle now, getting it tuned and dialed in for emissions. That's the next job that we've been doing. We put the scuttle on now. We're going to finish off the bulkhead and everything else once we've done it, uh, once we've tuned all the car, make sure everything else gets just easier. We've got a pin out there for the ECU and everything else. And we're in the final fitment stages now of fitting and trimming all of the bodywork, which has all been dry fitted. It's not fitted now, but it's all been dry fitted to the vehicle. So it's only a 10 minute job to put it back on because all the bonnet catches, everything's been pre-done, all the nose cone, anything else been done. So it's into the final stages of IVA prep now. Um, so something, something little being got to do, the wing mirrors on it, that's got to go on for IVA. We've got to do some um, geo on a car, but most of the geo has been finalised now. So it's just a couple of bits to do. New wheels and tyres that have got to go onto it. And then, yes, yeah, so in the next week, this should be getting ready, prepped to go and then sign up for IVA. And yeah, then it can get off to the owner because I know he's keen to get out there in spring. So not much to see because it all looks the same, but lots of things like the wiring and everything else has been tidied away and sorted out now. Um, and then we all say the final stages now is IVA prep. It's all boring stuff, IVA stuff, but it needs to do compliant. And if you need to learn about IVA, don't forget, got a nice little video on YouTube. If you type in IVA stuff, it's about a 45 minute video on uh, top 60 things to look for on IVA. Right, here we go, it's RX5 time, hashtag Barker car, as we would call it. Uh, what we've been on with, well, a few little bits now. We know we dry fitted all the body panels. Well, this one's side panels are now being fully bonded and secured in position. Hole's been cut in there for the exhaust manifold, you can see that's coming through. We've done with the rear arches. Um, these have been bonded on and fixed on. Nice little bit of P-trim in here. Don't have to have it on the new one. On the classic bodywork, we have the P-trim on the new stuff on the SX bodywork, it's not required. Rear tub has gone on uh, and as well, and we fitted the boot cover and the roll cage has gone on for the final fit and fix time. So these are done with poppers, and there is a video online on how to do them actually. Uh, quite an easy fit, it's nice and easy. <coughs> Pop, there you go. There, it gives you good access, very lightweight, waterproof, etc. Rear lights have gone on as well. Uh, they've been put in, and next job is reverse light. Oh, careful. Reverse light, even. Flying center lights and fog light, that's to go on, and the fuel cap. So, they are the next jobs that will be done on the back end here that will tidy all the back end up. And these are going to look quite nice, actually. It's got the black fuel cap. That low, really nice with the black and yellow, actually. Do like that colour combination. It was uh, been very, very popular over the years, the black and yellow. So that's gone on, looking clean and tidy. They've been continuing with the wiring as well, tidying that up. Dashboards all being bonded in now with the clocks. We've just got to fix that in position. And polish, whoosh, tidy up, clean up, start fitting the rest of the body panels, etc. as well then. So yeah, Barker car, continuing on its theme. Okay, it's XO Booster time. Here we are, Gen 2 Booster. If you've subscribed, you would have seen us been working on this one. Don't forget, it's down there. Just press that little bell icon, attach it to it and subscribe. You get to see these wonderful pieces of machinery. Been working on this Gen 2 engine, came into us, wasn't hitting past 6,000 RPM and we know the screen passed 11,000. So, and then a stonking engine. It was obviously something to do with fuel delivery or fuel issues or something like that. Customers had little problems with it. So we tackled in it, finally got to the bottom of it in the end. It could have only been one or two or three things, you know, in, in along the line. And it's basically fuel pump. Now this was a new fuel pump in there, but um, it's definitely different to what we would have for a Gen 2 booster. Um, this may be a very later one, I'm not sure, coded up. It also could be in for a Jix 1000, possibly. Um, but under here now, we fitted a new to him anyway. It's a used one, but it's a um, high booster fuel pump in there. And now she definitely lips rip past 11,000. It is awesome. Plenty of RPM, plenty of power, low down torque, box has been ticked. We've been on with the Geo, doing some other stuff with that as well. Hence it's up in the air. But while it's here, it had some TR1s, Toyo TR1s. They're just down at the uh, wheel shop now, having some Toyo R888s fitting on as a car. Get the final Geo, drop it down on the ground, and this one will be ready uh, to go back to the owner. And finally, he can enjoy it that 11,000 RPM screaming booster engine. Right, here we go, another exoskeleton car, this time the MEV Rocket. Now again, if you've been following the story, this one's coming in service, Geo, it's driving much better. We had the owner in the other day, test it all out, because it's only local to us, driving way much better. Had some air leaks on the engine, so we sorted that out, because it was cold start issues, running issues. That's all been sorted out now on the inlet plenums, etc. 
Give it service, oil change, gearbox, oil, engine oil, coolant. Didn't have much coolant in this before, mainly water. Um, so we've put the fluids in it and then we've run it all up. We've discovered it's got a leak. <laughs> Unfortunately, the leak is in the worst possible place you could have on one of these cars, which is right in the center tunnel, right in here. Now this is a fully fit interior. All the seats have had to come out. To get into here, remove all the paneling down this side. Um, and there's an aluminium pipe that runs from here all the way up with a join here, all the way up to the radio at the front on this one. So you've got alley pipe. Now my advice, if you're ever building one of these, and you may be building one of these out there, is put the joins at the very ends so at least you can get to them. Because now we've had to take take hours, taking seats out, seat belts out, battery boxes, ECUs, all of that. It's all the coming, all the interior bits out to get to one Jubilee clip that was down in here, tucked in this corner, about this distance in, which you cannot get to in any way, shape or form. So for the sake of a five, five minute job to tighten up a Jubilee clip, if less than that, that's what we've had to get to. So my advice is, if you've got that alley pipe, make sure you extend it far enough out that you can get in and get to it on the other side of the tunnel. And if you've got any joins along here, if you're thinking about doing it, I wouldn't go there. If, or if you're going to do it, access panels. Make sure you can get into it all, because what a marathon of a job. Poor old Peter had to get in there, a bit of a marathon of a job just to fix that. And now it's leaked, so what we've done here, save running it all up. What we've done is put a pressure tester on it. So we've got a little pump this up. You can buy these online, guys. They're pretty good. Um, if you want to test your pressurise your system before you run the engine and everything else, make sure you've got no leaks. It's really cool. You pump them up to pressure. We've been at 20 PSI here, and we've been running that for... It's probably been on there about 10, 15 minutes now, and it's holding pressure, so we know we've got no leaks, and it's also a good way then you can go around, inspect all your Jubilee clips, all your system to make sure there's no leaks. So when you start out for the first time, hopefully anticipate there'll be no leaks. So yeah, that's the next job now. So we fixed the leak. The interior that's is over here can go back in. We can glue back all the carpet inside there, put the boot leader on back, and another one that you can start enjoying the springtime coming summer driving in this car. So great little car now, drives much better. Oh, and we changed that steering wheel, which I did tell you last week. Much, much better. Customer drove that, you can feel it's much quicker in the rack now as well. It's much more pleasant to drive that it's not moving. So yeah, button this one up and we'll send this one back. Okay guys, it's that time of the week where it's chassis register time. That's up here this week. If you want to get yourself in the queue or talk about them, of course, hook us up on a phone call, email, or come and visit us at the factory. Talking about chassis though, you see this one's a little bit different. Yes, this is a Striker, Stroke Phoenix, Stroke Falcrum chassis. Um, you're probably wondering what's been going on with this, but it is behind the scenes stuff that we are still doing. You can see this has been done. We've made a chassis here. Um, what all the dots on it, you're going to ask? Well, there's loads of dots on it. Well, we've actually done it because when we had this, there was no plans, no drawing, no proper cutting this. So this has now been out and been scanned into 3D, into CAD. And now we can start making it and look at making, finishing the chassis and it all be geometry correct. Because at the moment, no two are the same. I promise you, because the jigs ain't right. We've made them, we've changed them. And now we can set about modifying the jigs. We want to make sure when we launch this car, that it's spot on and then we can make the outrigger kits for the phoenix and the falcon body so yes it's been going on you've been wondering what's going on the scene but this is an investment for us in time money energy everything else to make sure when we put this to market for you guys it's going to be spot on spring is on its way and those clocks i can't wait for them to change for us so that's it like share yes like 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 share subscribe and we'll catch you next week <laughs>